In late March, the founder of the globally famous soup dumpling franchise, Din Tai Fung, died at the age of 96. Yang Bingyi left behind a notable legacy. He elevated the humble dumpling into a premium product sold in more than 170 branches worldwide. That includes locations in the US, Japan and the United Arab Emirates. Yang came to Taiwan while the fleeing the Chinese Civil War and first set up a store in the capital selling cooking oil. But when he turned to soup dumplings, he never looked back. The chain's signature 18 pleat dumpling first caught overseas attention with a 1993 New York Times review. The restaurant's staple continues to be popular choice among locals and tourists alike. Din Tai Fung's success in the US has boosted Asian food representation. It's been featured in several travel shows and online, including a viral 2019 YouTube video produced by Inga Lam. For more on Din Tai Fung's unique significance, our reporter Joyce Zeng spoke with the YouTuber. In your opinion, what makes Din Tai Fung special? What Din Tai Fung has done really well is that it offers this great introduction to a side of Chinese cuisine that people here don't or that, that people here aren't familiar with, right? And then, so even if they don't know Ding Tai Fung, I feel like a lot of people know about Xiao Long Bao and soup dumplings because of Ding Tai Fung, you know, um, because people rave about it. Especially here in the States, I feel like people have this perception of Chinese food. You know, I think people generally think that it's a certain type of like Chinese American. Food. I think Ding Tai Fung for me is very much like comfort food, but like elevated. And like the skill level was insane. Like we saw somebody just like pleating dumplings. I think they could do like, I don't know, like so many in a minute. I'm not even talking about like an hour, I'm in a minute. How has Ding Tai Fung influenced your work? So BuzzFeed, this sh BuzzFeed has a show Worth It, right? Uh, when Worth It was in Taiwan. And so I sort of helped put like the spots together. And I think Ding Tai Fung was one of the ones that like we definitely wanted to go both because of, you know, what it's done in the US. And I was like, I really think we should go to the original location. A lot of my work is about sort of promoting these sort of foods that are familiar in my culture to people who are unfamiliar with it. You know, at the same time, you're also offering people who are familiar with it a sense of comfort. So I think it just reaches both parties in, in a way that, I don't know, brings them a lot of joy. Throughout your time on YouTube, have you observed any changes in Asian food content? When we talk about things like representation and, you know, especially when it comes to the Asian identity, when I first started um, working in the space of like digital media, I don't think there was as much. I feel like in the recent years, though, there are new platforms, right, that allow people to create in a very different way. And I think that has actually contributed to a whole lot more of of content around this topic. And so you see a lot more sort of like Asian based recipes, you know, it could be anything from like Chinese, uh, Korean, Japanese, Vietnamese, Thai, you know. Um, and now I feel like people are a lot more vocal about these things now that they know a lot more about these dishes. 